When we decided to give birth in Malta, the beautiful coastline and secluded anchorages were not our primary motivations. We came to Malta because we wanted to be prepared for the worst case scenario. I'm not feeling very strong right now. With a reputable healthcare system and English as a primary language, we felt Malta would be a good choice in the event that Isa were to have any medical issues. It turns out that we've been on a bit of a medical journey. She is about to get an MRI done. This is a very rare disorder. It's just been hard, like not really knowing what's going on. I think we just gotta try to stay positive, you know? Okay, well, I just handed Isa off to Jordan for uh, her morning walk, which means I've got two hours to tidy up the boat and just kind of get everything back in working order. I just realized I'm still swaying. That's funny, I don't need to sway anymore. So for the last four weeks, I've basically just been recovering pretty slowly. And meanwhile, Jordan has been an amazing father, husband, business owner, cook and cleaner. <laughs> and so now that I'm getting better in my recovery, I'm really trying to keep the boat float better. So while he's gone, I'm going to try to clean up the V-berth, the main cabin, do the dishes, take the trash out, throw in some personal hygiene like hair, tooth brushing, fold the clothes. This is my like crazy sprint mode. Okay, big day today. I've got my fancy shirt on, got some product in my hair. Look at that. Oh man. Because we are going to the U.S. Embassy to get the baby her citizenship and apply for a passport. Isn't that right, baby? You're gonna be an American. So I spent like all day yesterday getting all of her paperwork ready because apparently it's very like hard to prove that you're an American citizen. I thought that just a passport would do it. No, 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 no. How much we got here, bud? Well, we've got all this paperwork. That is a lot. Well, and the big issue that I'm worried about is that they say they want originals of everything, but we don't have our original marriage certificate. We have a copy. We're gonna find out if they're cool with that. Okay, we gotta go. Uber's coming. Okay, baby. She's so calm and you're relaxed. Being so good. Oh, yeah. Good job. <laughs> okay, you are safe and secure. Baby is locked and loaded, let's bounce. Okay. Okay, she's, she's in. She's sleeping? She well, is, yeah. Kind of. <laughs> so it turns out that we weren't able to film in and around the US Embassy. Good news is, Isabella is a US citizen, but it is gonna take a lot more running around, a lot more paperwork, for us to be able to get her passport, to get her social security card, to get her Maltese visa. I'm just starting to realize like all of this stuff is gonna take so much time and effort. It's kind of blowing me away. So that's been one aspect of having a baby abroad that I wasn't necessarily prepared for. Now we've been running around town a lot lately and for more than just Issa's citizenship stuff, it turns out that we've been on a bit of a medical journey lately. And it all started when I noticed a little gray fleck in Isabella's eye her pupil. We went to see an eye specialist. They said it was a small little cataract that she was born with. It's not a big deal. But they did notice that in her right eye, her optic disc is malformed. It's just shaped weird. They said there's a chance that it'll affect her vision. There's a chance it won't. Only time will tell. But in seeing that, they diagnosed Isabella with face syndrome. And face syndrome is basically a collection of disorders that are associated with each other. They don't really know how or why they're associated, but if you find two out of these five or six disorders, you really want to check for the other ones. So she has the hemangioma, the big birthmark, so that's one of them. Then issues with the development of the eye, that's another one. So we have to get the other ones checked out. So those are gonna be issues with the heart, issues with arteries, issues with the brain, and then issues with a cleft sternum. Tomorrow, we are going to take Isabella for her first MRI where we're gonna scan her brain and her neck to check on the, the brain and then the arteries. This is definitely been an overwhelming thing for us. I mean, I'm just hoping that it turns out that 
all she has is the birthmark and the eye issue. I mean, just the eye issue alone I'm very nervous about. There's a chance that she'll have vision issues, but there's a chance that she won't. So it's hard to it's hard to say. Anyway, so we're we're nervous and we're we're hoping that this MRI goes well. Okay, bud. What's going on? Well, we're trying to load her up with milk. Yeah. Because uh, she is about to get an MRI done. Uh -huh. And uh, so we're, we're doing it without any anesthetic or anything. Uh -huh. So the goal is to get her to be very asleep and very calm. Are you milk drunk yet, baby? You're going to do so good. Yeah. She's looking like she's concentrating really hard. What is the meaning of all of this? All right, well, how did that go? I think it went well, it just, I was so, it was so stressed out, <laughs> you know? So, um, basically the MRI showed that her brain is fine, which is one thing we were concerned about, but it turns out that she is missing her right internal carotid artery, which I guess is a really rare thing. Basically, there's three vessels that take blood to your brain, and Issa's missing one of them. At least that's what we now think. The long story short of it is that there's a chance that Issa will never have any negative symptoms. She very well could just live a totally normal life 100%. And then there are some symptoms that are associated with it that, you know, some are not that bad, some are less good. It's just been hard, like, not really knowing what's going on and then having to schedule all these, like, specialist doctor's appointments and then also, like, figuring out a newborn and what's normal for her and what's not. This is our first baby, so anytime I think something is is different or strange. I just, I just freak out and I'm not feeling very strong right now to, to be able to just keep it together, you know? So I'm stress eating ramen. This is a very rare disorder. Um, but if you add up all the rare disorders in the United States, I think it was 30 million people in the United States suffer from some kind of rare disorder. Desiree had juvenile rheumatoid arthritis growing up and you're fine. You know what I mean? It's like we're in the position that your parents were in when you were how old? I think we just gotta try to stay positive, you know? On a more positive note, my parents are coming to visit us and in fact, they'll, they'll be staying here a month, um, which is great because we could really use the help and they get to meet Issa for the first time. Yeah. So I think we just gotta try to Think about now. Focus on the positive, yeah. Love you. It's okay, buddy. It's gonna be okay. All right, I feel bad because Isa is very hungry, so she's gonna meet Steve and Rita and just be like, get me food! <laughs> Hello? Hey, big guy. Good to be here. <laughs> hey, mom. Hi, sweetie. Love you. Love you. Here you go, big guy. <laughs> the big guy and the teeny girl. Look, Issa, it's Grandma. She's looking at you. Look who it is. It's a good one. Okay, what's going on here, bud? We're doing a shower for the baby. And then we're all gonna take turns getting in this bathroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Issa, are you ready for this? What do you think, Oso? You could probably use a bath too, actually, buddy. You're getting a little stinky. She's like, okay, boob lady, I trust you. This does feel good. <laughs> oh, so shush. Come here, put your wine. What's all the fuss about, huh? What are we doing? Can I have a kiss? Thank you. Is he licking you? We did it. Wow, good job. We did it. Are you ready for food now? Oh, you're doing curls? Yeah, it's curly. Oh, wow. Give her a mohawk. You're doing yeah. a, a rockabilly thing. <laughs> yeah, she's got a mohawk. <laughs> oh, oh, oh so so nice. Nice. <laughs> So the first step in setting off on any adventure is making sure that we have the right gear for the job. 
And honestly, one of the most important pieces of gear for us is our shoes. That's why for years now, Keen has been our shoe brand of choice. When we're sailing offshore days away from land, slipping or busting our toes is just not an option. The Newport sandal made by Keen is specifically designed using razor siping on the sole to give us the best possible traction on wet decks. And the closed toe box protects our toes so that we can move about the boat with confidence, even when things get a little hairy. But unlike most other boat shoes, the Newport is a hybrid sandal. So once we drop the hook and hit the trail, our Newports are still the perfect choice for any outdoor exploration. So whether we're crossing the Atlantic, scrambling over rocks, or wading up a jungle river, our Newport sandals are essential to all of our adventures. Now, PeltsShoes.com is the best place to buy Newport sandals, as well as all of your Keen footwear. And right now, if you go to PeltsShoes.com slash Atticus, you can get 15% off your purchase when using the promo code Atticus at checkout. And finally, a special thanks to Keen for sponsoring this video. All right, well, it is a stormy, rainy, cold freaking day here in Malta. So today I'm gonna work on a project that I really hope I fix, which is this controller for the SPAR diesel heater. This thing has a thermostat in it. It's got this little dial here and I can set like the temperature that we want it to be in the boat and it'll kind of control the heater to maintain the temperature in the boat. Well, that has totally broken down. The heater itself works just fine, but it just goes full blast all the time, no matter what. So the problem is it can be chilly, so we turn the heater on, but then in like 20, 30 minutes, it's unbearably hot in here. I've got this fancy new digital controller. The problem is the wire colors are slightly different and there's six wires here and seven wires up there. I've tried calling the company and they're just not a very easy company to get in touch with. After looking at all of the paperwork, reading the manuals, I think I've got an idea of what I wanna do. So I'm just gonna start like plugging wires into other wires and see what happens. I may fry the whole freaking thing. Okay, so this is the best that I can come up with as to how to wire this from doing quite a bit of research. Oh, well, that's good news. It's already turned on. I think I did it. <laughs> Look at me, I did something. Yep. Yeah, she's running. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little impressed with myself. All right, so I shouldn't declare victory quite yet. I still need to remove this old controller and then mount the new one. But to do that, I gotta disconnect all of these wires, mount this wire bus strip back here behind the control panel and just generally clean everything up. So not quite out of the woods yet. All right, so the next project that I'm gonna jump on to involves the engine. And it's actually something that we haven't really discussed in our videos, I don't think at all. Not long after we installed this new alternator, we started having the belt squeal. Every time that we would turn the engine on for maybe like, I don't know, five minutes, for 10 minutes until the engine could warm up. We found that it was much worse if we turned the engine on and while it was still cold, we increased the RPMs quite a bit. So what we've actually been doing, basically ever since Bermuda, is we let the engine warm up for like 10 or 15 minutes before we increase the RPMs at all. That is very less than ideal in a lot of situations, particularly when you're worried about dragging anchor or you all of a sudden need to use the engine when you're sailing. Now this is an issue that the guys back at Robin Hood had told me may come up in time because the way that the belt contacts the pulley at the alternator, the belt only contacts maybe 30% of the pulley. And so there's just not a lot of surface area of belt touching pulley. And so what 
what happens is when that alternator starts up at the very beginning and it's still cold and so it's pumping out a huge amount of electricity, the resistance is really high and so there's just not enough belt touching the pulley for it to not slip a little bit. So what we need is some way to install an idler, which is basically like a pulley that does nothing, somewhere around here to get that belt to go over here and then down. To basically make it so that the angle of the exit of the belt here would be more acute making it so that the belt would actually contact more of the pulley. So the first step is I went and bought myself an idler online. It's basically just a bearing and then this wheel here. Then I approached a local metal fabricator and got him to make me this. Basically, the idler just threads on to the end of this right here. Put on a couple washers, put on a nut, then this is able to spin freely, and then this part is gonna go into that bolt hole that exists on the metal frame already. So I think this should work perfect. It's a really elegant solution because it's just such a simple thing and it's strong. Cross our fingers is gonna work. Let's go mount it. Man, it is not easy getting my hand back here. Okay, so now that the idler's actually in, it's time for me to swap out the old belt for the new longer belt. This is something that I'm gonna be really curious if this goes well, because I measured it, but you know how that goes, man. I feel like I always screw this part of the process up somehow. So let's give it a go. <laughs> Okay, I think we're basically good to go here. Belt's nice and tight. Yeah, and there's much more grab on the alternator pulley. Now, it went from probably like a third to about half of the pulley. All right, big guy, can you tell if I did anything stupid? See any reasons not to run it? Nope, I should go for it. Let's do it. Okay, here we go, fingers crossed. We're at like 1700 RPM, so the belt would definitely have squealed before. So here we go, this is it. I think we did it. I'm just gonna go down and I'm gonna check how much amperage is getting pushed into the batteries from the alternator. Yeah, it's 280 amps, so that's the full output right there. And absolutely no squealing. Yeah, big guy. Would you look at that big guy? A project actually just went the way I thought it would, or at least it has so far. My dad was like, shouldn't you check like the temperature of everything? I was like, nah, nothing could possibly go wrong. What do you think big guy? Do you give it your seal of approval? It's perfect. I don't know about perfect. <laughs> I'll take good enough. So today we saw Isabella's cardiologist, got the echocardiogram done, and her heart looks fine. So that is very, very good news. So that means that her brain is looking good, her heart is looking good. She's on propranolol, it's a medication that should help get rid of the birthmark. So that's actually some more good news that that should go away, if not completely, most probably mostly, which is which is really good. I'm very happy about that. So yeah, I mean, we've still got a long way to go with this medical journey. We need to see a neurologist to get their opinion on the full extent of the, of the risks involved with her missing her carotid artery. And then a couple more specialists. We, <laughs> we want to see an endocrinologist. We want to see a... Uh, a gene specialist, the person that does DNA. And things are looking optimistic, right? Like there's a chance that Issa's vision will be perfectly fine. There's a chance that the blood flow to her brain for her whole life will be perfectly fine. This is all very academic right now. There's nothing solid that is actually like a problem for Isabella. And so that's what we're gonna really focus on. And we're grateful for that. We're gonna, we're gonna hope that that stays the case. And beyond that, we're gonna try and just keep figuring out how to live on this boat with the baby.
Yeah, so it's been rainy and stormy for the last couple days and we've been kind of cooped up in the boat and so it's finally nice out and we decided to do a little rooftop barbecue. And this is the same Airbnb that we were at with CEO and Desiree's family. It's a really cool place. It's got a lot of stairs, <laughs> but it's just this beautiful old Mediterranean style house. And we can see Valletta. We can see a lot of the Three Cities area. So it's a really cool spot. So what's your impression of Malta? What do you think of this area? Same as when we first got here. Just a beautiful place. I mean, all the buildings are incredible. Different marinas and harbors around. You can tell it's definitely a uh, boating place. Isabella has been real testy today. So she is hanging out, having a nap in the baby carrier. I think that the Atlantic crossing, being in the womb during all that sailing, made her addicted to motion. I know all babies like to be rocked and stuff, but sometimes she will not be consoled unless you are actively holding her and walking around. So I think she's gonna be a great sailor. I'm gonna bring this down to Desiree. Can you put a steak on there, Mom? This is something we've been getting pretty used to is the fact that Desiree and I don't both get to do the same thing at the same time almost ever. So Desiree is down here feeding while we're having a sunset dinner. There you go, bud. Mm, thank you, that looks really good. All right, eat up and get some sleep. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Isa just had like a really fussy night so I didn't sleep very well so I'm just pretty tired today. <laughs> Mm. Ma'am, that is so delicious. So how is it, Mom? It, it's, it was a delicious dinner, but yeah. it's cold sitting up here. <laughs> yeah. But it's beautiful. So how does Malta compare to the other places you guys have visited us? Because you've been to Honduras, to Isla Mujeres, Mexico, Key West, I guess. Maine. Oh, Maine. Yeah, North, that's right. North Carolina. Oh, yeah. So how does this compare yeah, to this those This is places? very interesting. Very the architecture is just beautiful. Well, one thing that's very different this time with you visiting is normally we do a whole bunch of activities and do a lot of sightseeing and exploring. This time around, we like, it's just yeah. baby time all the time. That's it. Yeah, but it's fun time. Which has been wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> nope. 